Hello, and thank you for joining us for this discussion of an exoplanet detection by two citizen scientists um, from a recent test discovery. Oh, thank you, Justice and Bruno, uh, for joining me. I'm Thomas Vizito. I'm an astronomer at the SETI Institute and also work for Unistellar and at UC Berkeley. Um, and I wanted to hear more, Justice and Bruno, about this observation that you made and this exoplanet detection. So first, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves? Um, Justice, why don't you start? Sure. Uh, my name is Justice Randolph. I live in Athens, Georgia. Um, in my day job, I'm a statistician, uh, maybe a quantitative research methodologist in nursing. So uh, I'm getting used to uh, astronomy and astronomy statistics and math. So if I make a mistake, please bear with me. Okay, thanks. And Bruno, how about you? Hi, so I'm Bruno Guillet. I'm 40 years old and uh, I observe from uh, Caen in the city center of the uh, city of Normandy in France. It's uh, near the landing beaches of the Second World War. And uh, I'm associate professor at the University of Caen, and uh, I'm teaching uh, applied physics. So it's fun to, to do some astronomy uh, about exoplanets. All right, excellent. Uh, so, Justice, how did you hear about this opportunity to do this observation of this TOI 2031.01 exoplanet candidate? I see. So, Bruno and I are part of. Uh, Slack channel for the Unistellar SETI network. And um, I saw Bruno put out a call to see if anybody would be able to help him in my area because it was a long duration transit. Um, so with both of us together, we were able to cover the whole um, time for the transit. So if it wasn't for Bruno uh, on our Slack community, uh, this wouldn't have happened. And I, I think Bruno's a little bit more um, experienced than I am, so it really helped me for him to uh, choose it. All right, so Bruno, you, you picked the target first and then re re requested some help. Yeah, uh, I was curious about to know if it's uh, possible to uh, combine two independent uh, observations and uh, to know if it's possible to observe a long transit uh, in the future. So it was a just a attempt to, uh, to observe a transit. And I could not observe the world transit by myself, my, by myself, sorry, because uh, it's sometimes difficult to observe during the night and to work the next day. So it was fun to, uh, to start the observation and to give the baby to uh, justice uh, to observe the, the final uh, transit. Yes, I like it. I like the cooperation. Um, so, Justice, why was this particular target so interesting? Um, it met a few criteria where we thought it would work well for EV scope. First, the uh, depth was a little bit more than 1%. The magnitude was, around, um, was appropriate. I think it was around 11%. And it was uh, specified by the exofop top uh, test group as an important uh, target for follow up. I think it was a, a priority for for our ground based. So everything just kind of worked out well. And like uh, Bruno said, it was a good opportunity uh, opportunity to pilot test in this case. Right. Um, yeah. It's right right in the wheelhouse of the EV scope. Uh, so, um, what about the, the method that you and Bruno used um, to kind of split up this observation? Uh, I see. So, we looked at the timing and our geographic locations, um, and we figured out that maybe it would work well if one of us takes the ingress and one takes the egress. Luckily, we have the same um, instrumentation, so uh, it didn't uh, introduce that part of the error. And um, but Bruno was even able to do an independent uh, analysis 
in addition to the one you helped us with, Tom. Right, yeah, uh, I'll come back to that in a second. So um, I lead the, for SETI and Unistellar, I lead this exoplanet citizen science program. Um, so I'm familiar with the telescope that you two were using. It's a Unistellar EV scope. Um, it's just a small telescope, four and a half inch aperture. Um, but it's a, it's a smart telescope. It, it does um, tracking and target finding on its own, essentially. Um, and it allows us to get this better than 1% photometric precision that we need to detect these Jupiter-sized exoplanets around even sun-like stars. Um, we, we can detect even smaller planets around smaller stars. Um, so uh, the, it's nice to have two identical telescopes, even when they're two continents apart, so that we can combine their data so easily um, because the photometry, the, the measurements of the star brightness that we make are so compatible between the two data sets. Um, and those results are on the poster. I won't go through them in detail. So if you can see them um, more easily by, by looking at the actual poster. Um, but I'll just mention that we, when, when Bruno and Justice made their observation, they recorded the images with their telescopes and then they uploaded those images to us at SETI and Unistellar. Um, we processed the, the images into transit light curves and then fit uh, models to the data in order to uh, retrieve parameter measurements for the planet um, and the, the transit. And uh, from that analysis, we were able to uh, create the light curve that's shown on the poster um, in the center and make a measurement of the mid-transit time of the, 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 the event uh, to, within, to be within um, four minutes, plus or minus two minutes at the one sigma level um, of the actual test prediction. So our measurements were consistent with what we expected from previous observations, um, which means that nothing unusual is happening in this planetary system. It's this planet is just happily orbiting on its own. Um, uh, so, uh, Bruno, you also did your own analysis. Um, could you just tell us briefly about that? Yeah, okay. Uh, I tried to, uh, to perform some analysis with uh, OPS software and uh, exotic software. It's uh, a free software. And uh, I have already uh, performed this kind of analysis with uh, my own uh, transit observations. With uh, I observed... Uh, my, uh, a transit alone. So I, I, roll, I performed this analysis uh, two times before, but here it was uh, fun to, uh, to combine two data sets and to, uh, to try to, uh, to find the parameters of this uh, exoplanet. So I tried to, uh, to extract uh, with ops and exotic the mid transit time and uh, the duration and uh, the ratio between the planet and the star. So everything is on the poster. So maybe uh, Tom can explain and take uh, the opportunity to uh, explain the difference between the different analysis. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll just briefly, you know, each different analysis of the three between HOPS, Exotic, and the Unistellar SETI pipeline each of them measured um, the fluxes of the stars uh, separately using aperture photometry in every case, but a slightly different version of it. And then the model fits are, and the, um, the detrending of the light curves uh, all, all varied slightly. So um, they used um, you know, various methods to, to retrieve those planet parameters, um, which are detailed a little bit more on the poster. Uh, but essentially, the result was all of the measurements were consistent with each other within our uncertainties and within the, the test prediction um, uncertainties. So, you know, we're confident that we actually have a, a clear detection here and uh, a valid measurements of the mid-transit time of this planet um, and also the, the planet to star radius ratio, which you know, is related to the depth of the transit. Um, so I was very happy to see that all of our numbers came out consistently. Um, and so that's just about it. What, what are your plans for the future? Do you have more of these transit observations um, on your schedule? Indeed. Bruno is fantastic at uh, choosing uh, 
targets as are you, Tom. And I think we even have one this weekend. And uh, I'm proud to know that we were part of this uh, ground-based effort um, of citizen astronomers to find the long duration transits. And I hope we've shown that um, it's possible, which is two citizen astronomers and a little help from our friend like Tom, uh, that we can make a difference in these ground-based follow-up transits. Cool. Yeah, well, I definitely look forward to seeing more from you and uh, some more transatlantic observations like this and uh, even, even across broader regions than that. So thank you very much. And uh, for everyone else, thanks for looking at our poster. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.